What's up everybody, JJ here. Well, October's here, thus it is sweater time. That also explains all these skulls that I have over here. I've been printing all of these on the Anycubic Mega S, but the difference with these is that they were printed using the Clipper firmware. I've been so impressed with this firmware, and in today's video I'm gonna to explain to you how to get it installed on your printer. I ran into a ton of issues installing this. It took me a full weekend of work, and with the fixes that I've found along the way, hopefully it shouldn't take you more than a couple hours to get this working. It really is a fairly quick process. For those of you who clicked on this video not knowing what Clipper firmware is, let me explain. Clipper firmware is fundamentally different than other firmware for your 3D printer. The most common printer firmware is based on Marlin, and it runs entirely on your printer's main board. It's trying to do a lot of processing and controlling all these motors at the same time. It's a lot going on there and is not a very powerful processor. Clipper takes all the computational processing, moves it to a Raspberry Pi, and uses your main board just to control the motors and physically control the printer, while all the brains of the operation is moved to a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna be using a Pi 4 today, but you can even use a Pi 3. I've even heard of installations using a Pi 0. If you don't use a webcam, apparently even a Pi 0 will work. So you need a little bit of convincing. Why would this be so much better than your firmware that came on your printer? There's two big reasons, faster prints, this is an example of me printing what I thought was ludicrously fast, it can now handle. And this is even my new normal speed. This is double what I used to use. This is 100 millimeters per second and 3000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. And the second reason beyond them being just faster, I think they're also better. There's some really advanced ways to tune your printer with Clipper. So I'm getting prints that are coming out faster than they used to, but also way better than they used to come out. So I've been super impressed with Clipper. Now on to the installation. The first step, if you are already running OctoPrint on your printer through a Raspberry Pi, I would recommend pulling that SD card out and keeping it separate. If you have a spare, I usually just buy a pack of these and always keep some micro SD cards around. So I just save my OctoPrint SD card to the side. That way, if this installation doesn't work or if I get frustrated halfway through, I could easily just put that old SD card right back in there and go back as if nothing ever changed. But if you don't have a spare SD card around, you can easily save your OctoPrint configuration file to your computer. That way you can revert to that file later. So we're going to be using Fluid Pi today to make this installation a little bit easier. I tried out both Fluid and Mainsail and I found I liked Fluid's interface a little bit better but I've heard reasons online both ways, and they're fairly similar options, so I don't think either one is a bad choice. I'll link the website URLs that I use down in the description below. First, you're gonna need to go to the Fluid GitHub and download the latest version of Fluid Pi. Next, I would recommend using Raspberry Pi Imager to flash your SD card, but you could use Belina Etcher if you're more familiar with that software. So choose your operating system, go in and select that file you just downloaded, choose your storage, and make, click yes, and it will start writing to that SD card. And now that it's completed, it says you can remove the SD card. So I'll have to remove it and put it back in because we need to put in your Wi-Fi settings. Open up the drive, go down to the fluid-wpa-supplicant.txt, edit it with a notepad plus plus. Remember, don't use WordPad on this. That can mess up some of the formatting. If you haven't used notepad plus plus, I would highly recommend it. It's just a great text editor for any programming you ever do. Go down to this section for WPA slash WPA2 secured. Go through here, remove all these pound signs or hashtags. Under SSID, inside of the quotes, put in your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password here. Then you can save and close that text file. Now you can eject your micro SD card and put it in your Raspberry Pi. Don't, don't connect your Raspberry Pi to the printer yet. We're going to do some updates and work on here. And now you can connect your Raspberry Pi to any power supply. It doesn't need to be here where you're working, it's just going to connect to your Wi-Fi. I'm going to go plug it up in the closet. Now the first time you plug up a fresh image on there, it will take a little while to get going. So there's a solid LED on there and a flashing LED. Wait till the flashing LED sort of turns off and turns back on. Initially it, was it will stay fairly solid, wait till it turns off and then you're ready to work. While it's booting up, you will need to find your IP address of that Raspberry Pi. I would recommend connecting to your router if you know how to do that and get the IP off of there. And you can just open up any web browser and type in that information. And this will take you to a fresh installation of Fluid. The first thing to do is to update everything. Even if you get the latest image, things immediately can become out of date. So go to settings, which is the gear on the left side, scroll all the way to the bottom, 
and here is software update. First update your OS packages and then you can update the other ones. The OS packages could take 10 to 20 minutes depending on how much it needs to update and how fast your Wi-Fi and Raspberry Pi is. Now that your Raspberry Pi and all the software on it is up to date, we can now create the firmware that goes onto your 3D printer. So we're going to need to SSH onto the Raspberry Pi. I use PuTTY, but you can use any SSH software you want. Type in your host name, which will be your IP address, or whatever you use to log on to that website. Put it here. Click open. Your, log your default login for any Raspberry Pi is, the login is Pi, and password is Raspberry. Now is a good time to change the password on your Raspberry Pi before you go in and configure anything else. Type in sudo raspi config, and then you type in your password. Go to system options, hit enter. Go to password, hit enter. Now type in your new password. Your password is now changed. Now you can click finish to take you back to the terminal. Now to create the firmware, type in these commands. For the Anycubic Mega S, you can leave these settings standard. It's an at mega AVR is the microcontroller architecture. And for processor model, this is an at mega 2560. So just hit escape to get out of that. Now type in make. And we'll go through and build the firmware for you. And this is the error that I got the first time going through here. And I had the biggest difficulty figuring it out. The solution, type in make clean. That clears it out. Type in make again. And now it will build the firmware. I'm not sure exactly why it was missing those files the first time, but cleaning it clears it out correctly. Once it's completed, it tells you where it put that file, but that file is now on the SD card on the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna need to get that one off. To do that, I use the software WinSCP. It's similar to PuTTY, but instead of opening a terminal on the Raspberry Pi, it opens up the file manager on the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna use the same IP address as before, change port, in this case to 22 username, type in your username and password. If you change the Raspberry Pi password, use the new password here. If not, it'll be Raspberry. Log in. It will give you another warning that if you know this server, hit yes, it connects. Now this is the location you need to go to. It's home slash pi slash clipper slash out. And it's the clipper.elf.hex file that we want off of here. You can simply drag and drop this file onto your own file explorer or copy paste works as well. I'm then gonna rename it to Clipper Firmware, just for me to remember which one this one is. I think you can leave it default and it'll work fine. So this is the hex file we now need to flash onto the 3D printer. I use Cura to flash it over there, but there's several other ways you can flash firmware. This is just what I normally use to update firmware anyways. In Cura, go up to your printers, click Manage Printers, Go to the one you want to update and connect your computer to the printer using a USB cable. Click update firmware. If these options are grayed out like this, make sure your printer is turned on, make sure the cable really works, and then click upload custom firmware, select that .hex file to get it uploaded to your printer. Before I uploaded the custom firmware, I did unplug the front screen. I've heard that can mess with installation. And since the touchscreen won't really work with Clipper, I just went ahead and unplugged it. I also printed out this front cover to completely cover up the screen since the screen's not gonna be on anyway. Now you can connect your Raspberry Pi up to the printer and then go back to the web page. It will give you the warning up top that will let you know that there's no printer config file selected. I posted mine on my GitHub down below. It works for the Anycubic Mega S with the TMC2208 stepper motor drivers and the wire plugs have not been reversed. It's not that big of a deal if your stepper motor configuration is backwards, your motors will just move in the wrong direction, and then you can go back into the config file and change it later. It's super easy to do. So you can just take the clipper config file, drag it into your config file settings. You'll need to rename it down to just printer.config, save that file, click firmware restart, and now it's loaded on there ready to go. So now it's time to connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer. Plug it up through USB, and then now power on the Raspberry Pi. It does need a good power supply. I can't power it off of this laptop. Maybe if you have a better plug on your laptop, it could 
could work. So I'm going to plug it up in the closet. I've got a good power supply. So I needed the good micro USB cable that was powering that. So that's going to be off to get the Raspberry Pi some good power. So now that things are connected, we need to figure out the serial port that the Pi is connected to the 3D printer through. So we'll use PuTTY to get back to the Raspberry Pi and input this command. And on PuTTY, if you've copied something from somewhere else and need to paste it in there, it's a right click, press enter. This is the response I got back. It's pretty specific to the USB controller in the Anycubic Mega S. Copy that entire line, go to your printer.config file, go to MCU and paste that line right here. And up on the top, you can hit save and restart. And since this is the default serial connection, you shouldn't need to change that serial connection ID, but if you need to, that's where you do it. So now if there's no errors or warnings on your screen, you should be up and running. You can also start to see that things are reading correctly. For example, the temperatures are reading at about room temperature around 25 degrees Celsius. So now you're really off to the races running. With your first installation of a new configuration file, I would recommend going through the Clipper website. It has a configuration checks web page and it goes through a huge list of basically you go through and check all the hardware is working correctly. There's all these ways that things could go wrong here. So it's good to make sure the hardware is working correctly. So you run the heaters and make sure the measurements are going up as they should. You move the X, Y, Z, you touch the in stops, make sure in stops are working correctly. And now you're basically up and running. For example, I can move the X axis. I can home the Y axis. And we're back. The memory card was full last time, so it didn't catch my outro that I recorded. So here we are recording it again. But luckily for you, usually it's better the second time around. Because I've had more time with the system, printed even more things. I'm approaching a 30 minute Benchy, so stay tuned for that video in the future. But that about wraps up the installation of Clipper. It should be running well on your printer now. Let me know in the comments down below if you're having any troubles. And if anyone out there is more experienced with Clipper and I missed something along this guide, make sure to put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you stuck through this far in the video and you found this video useful, please hit that like button down below. It lets other people know that this video is useful to them. And if you like this type of content, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. And I've got a lot more 3D printing videos planned for the future, so you won't want to miss those. Now that your printer is running nice and fast, go out there and create something amazing today. 